So today we're gonna go ahead with Behave by Robert Sapolsky, I guess, should be in the title, so I don't actually know. And yesterday we stopped with Oxytocin, which is, as well, as I've remembered and after reading, it's kind of the, the cuddle hormone, isn't it? Like when you're, I mean, if you go through or if you, if you think about kind of what it does, increases mother-childhood bonds, encourages monogamous pair bonding, I mean, it's all like yeah, let's be together and let's just uh, cuddle. Well, anyway, the next one is going to be Ellison's care so much about what others think, which is, at least in my point of view, totally the case. Unfortunately, even though um, I'm also seeing it in younger siblings, which is something that I'm, well, a little bit concerned about, to really be honest, because it is something that's so deeply fucked up. You know, being so... Caring so much about what anybody thinks or what, what everybody thinks, this is insane shit. It really tremendously is. And, you know, might be due to, well, culture is changing. Society is changing. Things are changing. You know, I, I could say, okay, you know, it's probably social media. That's to be blamed. But, you know, not, not necessarily. But anyway, it seems like Elsons are particularly sensitive to what others think of them. In brain scans, the same brain area lights up when answering the questions, what do you think of yourself and what do, what do others think of you? As if the two were the same, and else there is some overlap, but the two are not the same. Adolescents also feel a stronger need to belong in a game of passing the ball to each other. Adults who were excluded felt bad, but then the part of the brain who rationalized and trivializes kicks in. So they might tell themselves, who cares? It's just a stupid ball game. In Ellison's, there is no brain region that activates to mitigate the pain. What is Ellison's? Isn't it? Have I gotten something wrong? Teenage years. Oh, 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 I see. I mean, I thought about that as well. You know, I, I, I really did. Uh, in terms of the older you get, the more you give a fuck about well, anything. You know, the more you, well, the less you give a fuck just in general, like what it is about the weather, what it is about just meeting friends, what it is about COVID, what it is about whatever. People really don't give a shit when they're fucking old. And it's tremendous. To help, you need detachment. The person who is more likely to help and act is not the one who feels the most empathy. Too much empathy can crush the person emotionally and he does nothing or moves away. Instead, the more people can regulate their empathetic emotions, the more likely they are to act pro-socially. Thus, the ability to gain some detachment is one predicator of who actually does take action. That's why Ellison's tends to be more empathetic, but can't get overwhelmed and take no action. This theory, taken to an extreme, has led some psychologists to suggest that psychopaths with zero empathy can make for effective human beings, but I don't fully agree. Well, I mean, we went through the psychopath inside and apparently um, it's the case that, well, there is a, a difference between sympathy and empathy. When I, I, I don't remember it that well, but it has something to do with they can feel or, well, basically they can understand that somebody's feeling in a certain way, but it is basically not... Um, well, it's it's basically basically not affecting themselves, you know. They can feel it; they are gonna admit it and whatnot. But it's not affecting them. So in the end, empathy is feeling with somebody. You know, they just don't feel with you, but they can understand that you're feeling a certain way. Well, further readings there: the wisdom of psychopaths or the good psychopath guide, the wisdom of psychopaths notes and review. Well, the marshmallow test, which is highly, highly, highly criticized. And yeah, anyway, the marshmallow test has received a lot of criticism, see, pop psychology myths and psychology replication crisis. But Sapolsky defends it, saying that a gazillion dollar brain scanner doesn't hold more predictive power than one marshmallow, apparently. Kids with poor impulse control who wanted to hold on but suddenly ate the marshmallow, that profile is a statistical predicator of adult violent crime wanted to hold on but suddenly ate the marshmallow well it is very 
if you think about it, like if you kind of have the scene in your mind, it feels like a very impulsive action. And I mean, crime and violence is also impulsive. Kids with, well, most often it depends. I mean, yeah, anyway. Kids with steep time discount curves who think it makes no sense waiting. That's a predicate of adult property crime. <laughs> what the fuck? 40 years post marshmallow, excellent. What? 40 years post marshmallow ex excelled at frontal functions, had more PFC activation, and had lower BMIs. Bovely and detachment theory. Attachment, I'm sorry. There is no evidence that a woman damaged his, well, her child if she doesn't breastfeed. And nothing in the science says that the same good attachment can't be provided by a man who mommies or two daddies. My notes, a father equivalent to mother should not be implied. I'm skeptical about the man same as woman statement. The fact that science doesn't categorically exclude that a man can provide the same attachment as a mother should not lead anyone to suggest that a father is equivalent to a mother. And I would say so as well. There is a different bond and there is a different thing. It is fucking nature. It is biology. I mean, there is a reason why men don't breastfeed. Guess what? And women breastfeed. Of course, there's going to be a different connection. You know, it's just inevitably going to be the case, at least my opinion, my point of view. It just makes sense if you think about it. Like, okay, you know, this woman, this person gives me food. I'm laying on her chest. This person gave birth to me. Like, of course, I'm going to have a different attachment. I'm going to have a different relationship to this person than to, you know, someone that I'm only quote-unquote, genetically uh, related to, if this makes sense. I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, also read Attachment Styles Overview and test your attachment style, which I think that I'm going to do at the end. Well, let's open. It's abortion lowers crime. Liberals said it was the economy that lowered crime. Conservatives, conservatives said it was more budget for policing. A smart study instead showed too strong a correlation between abortion laws and crime Crime dropped 20 years later, not to imply causation. Of course, the findings were controversial, but they don't seem controversial to Sapolsky, who says, what majorly predicts a life of crime, being born to a mother who, if she could, would have chosen that he had not be. What's the most basic thing provided by mother? knowing that she's happy that you exist. Which is a quote, by the way. Um, yeah, I don't know. It is difficult to say. Well, I do wonder, and I'm actually very, uh, pretty much looking forward to the rating this book got. Yeah, because I initially do not want to know the rating because it is obviously going to, um, gonna alter my judgment, so alter, uh, it's gonna alter my opinion about what is being said, but, you know, the thing is, I'm, I'm not a specialist in whatever this book is about, you know, I'm not a behavioralist or something, and therefore it's like, well, in the end it, well, I could actually scroll down and show you, well, anyway, nevertheless, well, I actually do want to know the rating, but I don't give a fuck now, Pros, uh, behave is a majestic work. It provided much information for my own work, including a couple. Its only limitation, in my opinion, is its own strength. By providing such a vast interdisciplinary overview, the reader might end up overwhelmed and walk away with little practical information. Is there a rating? I love behave. So it probably got a pretty good rating anyway. Let's move to, I mean, I gotta have to say it is an incredible book and I'm actually thinking about reading it since it, it is definitely one of these topics that, that I tremendously enjoy. I mean, I behave in a certain way, people behave in a certain way and understanding why this is the case is amazing. Bullies and bullets. Yeah. Bullying targets are unsele selected at random, but tends to be those types of kids with a kick me sign behind their back. Bullied kids traits. 
personal or family psychiatric issues, poor social and emotional intelligence. Bullies disproportionately from single mom families, <laughs> young parents with poor education and or employment prospects. Two profiles of bullies. The first one is the anxious, isolated kid with poor social skills, bullying out of frustration to receive, to receive acceptance, the most typical and the major out of bullying. Confident and unempathetic, socially intelligent kid with imperturbable sympathetic nervous system, the future psychopath. Well, congratulations if this is your fucking kid. <laughs> but I gotta have to say, like, the bully kid, personal or family, psychiatry, yeah, makes sense. And poor social and emotional intelligence also makes sense. I mean, if you feel, if you feel awkward in the eyes of other people, then of course, well, not necessarily of course, but chances are, at least in my point of view, a bit higher that, that you're gonna get bullied. Anyway, social learning is crucial. A few examples. Gender math differences. The differences between math scores between men and women grow smaller as the countries become more uh, gelitarian. And they all but and they all but disappear even slightly inverting in Iceland where the genders are the most equal. But some differences, like better reading performance by girls, gets bigger in more gender equal societies, apparently. Alcohol and aggression. Alcohol makes those who believe that alcohol makes you more aggressive, more aggressive. Interesting. Status related behavior. Social behavior of submission and aggression are hardwired, but parents and socialization teach when each one is appropriate. A monkey raised in isolation displayed all the correct, but unquote, aggressive and submissive behavior, but at the wrong times and the wrong people. Oh, I'm sorry, but at the wrong times, at the wrong people, challenging the alpha when it had not the power and strength to do so. Yeah, makes sense, I guess. Individualist versus collectivist. I mean, going back to the thing, if you understand the dynamics of a society, it it does make sense that, that well, if you, if you don't understand and if you don't know the, uh, the rules... Um, rules in terms of okay what makes a leader for example what makes the alpha what makes this person and of course i mean if you understand that then you know where you can challenge this person or this animal or this whatever this alpha type guy whatever but if you don't know the rules the social rules if you don't understand the variables and the dynamics then well it obviously makes sense that you are going to challenge this person or this animal or this alpha anyway you know you, you're just going to challenge it because you you see okay this is the alpha person well on the other hand how do you notice that this is the alpha person if you don't understand the dynamics if you have grown up in isolation another question i don't know but the thing is well yeah it makes sense that you're going to behave different and probably dumb in in the other animal's eyes anyway individualist versus collectivist cultures the differences are strong and real but they are not always positive for collectivist societies and negative for individualistic 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 ones as they are often presented or presented yeah both individualists and collectivists denigrate outgroups but only collectivists inflate assessment of their own groups and that might be why japanese feel they're so good individualist and collective collectivist cultures also produce different moral systems for example in collectivist societies conformity and morality are synonymous and the law enforcement is more about shame there is a genetic reason why the yes is more individualistic and that is in the prevalence of the r7 Alili or Alili, I don't know. People who emigrated to America starting from the very uh, from the very first migration were more restless, more driven, more yearning for freedom and mobility. People, I do want to repeat that people who emigrated to America started from the very first migration, starting from the very first migration, were more, more restless, more driven, and more yearning for freedom and mobility. The R7 elderly is almost non-existing in Asian populations, especially in Japan and Taiwan, 
The author says it's because of rice, which requires large social efforts to support. My note, which is the note of the uh, author of the summary, I don't, believe, I don't believe this ad hoc evolutionary explanation. The author says that when Asian societies started growing rice, they also started selecting against our seven genes. That sounded nonsense to me. It sounds a lot like one of those after the facts made up evolutionary psychology. Yeah. I don't know. Like, in my head, to some degree, it does make sense. Of course, you know, it, it you know, you, you need, well, you need to have quite a lot of people to grow rice, but what about wheat? You know, and or corn in America. Like, I don't know, doesn't it also take some people? I don't know. But it's very interesting to see. Inequality makes people unkind. Cultures with more income inequality have less social capital. The author says that trust requires reciprocity and reciprocity requires equality. Instead, cultures with big gaps are, are the opposite, because hierarchy is about domination and asymmetry. This shows in research in many different ways, including the higher the income inequality, the less people vote. Interesting. The more income inequality, the less likely people are to help someone in experimental uh, experimental settings. The more income inequality, the less generous and cooperative people are in economic games. The author talks about antisocial punishment, whereby people punish those who cooperate too much and high levels of inequality and or low levels of social capital predict high rate of bullying and antisocial punishment. Tremendously interesting book. Uh, it is insane. I do hope that I'm going to find something else, something similar to this one um, after I went through it. But let's actually check out this attachment style quiz thing. Attachment style quiz. Uh, fuck. Well, let's see. I gotta actually have to write it down then. To some degree, at least. Um, let's see. Uh, the quiz is quick and simple. Below is a list of statements. If you don't agree with the statement, simply move on to the next one. And if you agree with one of the statements, mark down the uh, respective letter next to the statement. So A, B, or C. Answer thinking about your feel towards relationships in general and not just about your last one. Wait, if you agree with one of the statements, mark down the respective letter next to the statement. Oh, okay. I'm scared that if we break up, I won't find anyone else. No. I'm uncomfortable when my partner gets too close. No. During arguments, I tend to say things I later regret. Well, I sometimes do. So I'm going to pick this A. I don't question the relationship because of a single argument. No, I don't. My partner often urges me to be more intimately close. No. I worry I'm not good looking enough. Well, let's actually pick this A again. Interesting. I might be seen as boring because I'm rather stable. No. I miss my partner, but when we are together for... I miss my own space. Do I miss my own space then? No, not necessarily. Um... I'm comfortable speaking up if I disagree with someone. Do I do this? I actually really rarely do this because I just don't like confrontation. I'm relieved if someone I'm involved with looks at other people because they won't try to make things too serious. But I am relieved if someone I'm involved with looks at other people because they won't try to make things too serious. No, I don't like that. I'm actually a pretty jealous person, fortunately. I get depressed if someone I'm involved with looks at other people. Well, let's pick this A again. Fuck, man. Uh, if someone I'm dating acts cold, I wonder what's happened, but I don't think it's about me. Yes, let's pick this B. I do de definitely wonder. Um, if someone I'm dating acts cold, I'm indifferent, sometimes even relieved. Hmm. Really rarely, so I'm not going to pick this. If someone I'm dating acts cold, I worry I've done something wrong. Well, I I also do so. Another A. I'm having three A's and a B now. Um, if my partner wants to break up, I'll try to show them what they will miss. Hmm. If my partner of a few months wants to break up, I'd be hurt. 
but I would get over it. Mm. Sometimes in a relationship I get what I want and then I'm not sure about what I want anymore. Mm. I have no problem in platonically staying in touch with an ex. No, I don't like that. I don't... Uh, I don't create much drama in my relationships. No, I don't. I often worry my partner might might get involved with someone else. Do I? Nah, actually. Well, in general, it would be the, the next A for me to pick, so I'm not going to pick it. <laughs> um, emotionally supporting my partner is not easy for me. Well, it is easy for me. When I'm single, I'm, not, I'm more anxious and incomplete. Am I? Well, I think a bit, so it's another A. I bounce back quickly after breakups. I feel that if someone knows the real me, they won't like me. No, I just completely don't think so. It's easy to be affectionate with my partner. I often worry my partner will stop loving me. I'm comfortable with being dependent on my partner. Yes, my independence comes first. Mm. I don't share my deepest feelings with my partners. Well, yeah, I do. I'm afraid my partner will not return my feelings if I share them, no. I'm generally content with my relationships. I often think about my relationships. Well, I do often think about my relationship, which is another A. I don't like being dependent on my romantic partner. I get attached very quickly. Well, you know, I would actually say so as well. I mean, another A. So, um, no, nah, I'm not going to go through all of them. The rest, I'm actually apparently... Anxious attachment style. Anxious. People with an anxious attachment style have great capacity for emotional intimacy and get attached strongly, quickly. Relationships take up a lot of their mental cycles and a lot of their energy. They tend to be more temperamental, more sensitive to their partner moods, and along with the positive feelings of intimacy, they experience lots of negative emotions as well, including worrying their partner does not return their feelings. They can often get carried away and see uh, and say mean things that they will later regret. As a result, their relationships tend to be uh, mercurial and with lots of up and downs and lots of arguments and makeups. Anxious people will greatly benefit from a relationship with a secure partner because someone with a secure attachment style will take away many of the worries, anxieties, and arguments. The secure one, secure people are the most calm and confident of them all. They are comfortable with intimacy without being overly worried about jealous or jealous. They communicate effectively and they tend to keep an even keel without any major swings of moods or emotions. And yeah, that being said, gonna end the episode. Bye bye. Have a nice day.